right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Peter Levitan, who is in San Miguel de Allende in Mexico. How are you doing, Peter? I'm fantastic. Excellent, excellent. And, you know, Peter spent a long, long period at Saatchi and Saatchi, very well-known advertising agency, uh, also owned uh, Citrus Advertising in Portland. It's a CEO and founder of two major internet startups. And today, Peter is going to talk about how to create unignorable brand and messaging system that breaks through the massive info clutter and gets companies and brands noticed and listened to because the alternative is crickets. And we don't, uh, we don't want more crickets. Exactly. So, um, so, so Peter, um, let's start off by, let me start by asking you, what, is, what, is, what are some of the major mistakes you think that most brand and messaging is making today that, you know, that they end up hearing crickets in the marketplace? I would say it's not trying to avoid being me too. And it's very easy to kind of be me too, because we all read and we read articles, we read blogs, we look at YouTube, et cetera, all telling us how to behave, how to do, what to do. And unfortunately, too many people do exactly the same thing without asking themselves before they do anything, how can I create a situation where I am going to be unignorable? Because as you pointed out a minute ago, the alternative is to be ignored. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you, um, so obviously like the temptation is to be me too, as you say, because everybody's using kind of the same frames of reference. How do you break out of that and start to find something that's not just, not just that is different, but is different and, you know, can make an impact because you can be different without making an impact too. Well, I was brought up, uh, as you mentioned, at Saatchi and Saatchi, mm -hmm. where the mantra was nothing is impossible. It was the largest advertising agency in the yeah. world. It was the most famous agency in the world. When I moved to London, I got in a London cab and I said, uh, I gave them my address and they said, oh, you're going to Saatchi's. Well, I had mm -hmm. never experienced that. You know, advertising agencies yeah, are not that sure. well known. So I, uh, I grew up in a culture where being well known is important to the brand. Now today, this is unbelievably difficult. I, I wrote some numbers down. I don't, let's just use these as directional. Mm -hmm. Six million blog posts, 800 million users for TikTok, <laughs> 660 million LinkedIn, a good number actually, only 850,000 podcasts and the numbers go on. Right. We're all uh, grown ups. we're all adults, we're all humans. We have a tendency to say similar things using similar tools. So you're asking me the, probably the most difficult question of all, which is how do you break out? And I will say the first thing you have to do is ask yourself, how do I break out? Do I wanna break out or do I wanna be me too? It sounds pretty simple, but I can point you to a couple of uh, examples of not me too. Yeah, no, and I think that that would be a good place to go because yeah, I think it is. I mean, I think it's easier said than done, isn't it? It's like saying I don't want to be me too, but I don't know how to be not me too. So some examples of not me too would be good. Well, I'll give you a, a British example. Uh, I spoke to a friend of mine this morning at an agency called London Advertising. They are the mm -hmm. most award-winning agency in London. Uh, very creative agency. They just ran their own advertising campaign for themselves using television and outdoor media. And uh, as you might imagine, well, first of all, very creative guys, very smart. Mm -hmm. They had sure. to do that without photography because they, they couldn't photograph anybody. You know, they have to sort of live by the restrictions in COVID. Mm -hmm. But because they're an ad agency that actually did what ad agencies tell their clients to do, they stood out. And uh, they're ever more well-known than they were a few days ago or a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago. Another agency I point to, I point to advertising agencies because they're usually not, they're, they're, <laughs> right. they're not as good as they should be. It's an agency in Toronto that invented the thing that I stole for, from them, which is um, being unignorable. And this agency is called John Street, John ST period. And I, I urge your audience to go look at their videos mm -hmm. on YouTube. These guys are not only creative, but they're crazy. Right. And they have told me that uh, they would get calls from brands like Coca-Cola saying, what are you doing? You guys are brilliant. 
And they did it by knowing that they had to do stuff that was very, very different. And I'm telling you, I mean, they invented cat advertising. Remember a few years ago, we all liked sure, cat yeah. videos. Mm -hmm. So they invented a part of their agency that only used cats in advertising. Yeah, so, so I mean, a lot of people would say, okay, like, okay, so advertising agencies, brand agencies and all, like, you know, they can get very creative. But if you say, like, well, I'm, I'm a, just a run-of-the-mill technology company or I'm a run-of-the-mill whatever else, how do I, how do I break out of, of the Me Too when, when sometimes I think maybe people are looking for Me Too? You know, like if somebody's looking for a product, you know, how do I stand out and be different without being so different that they don't notice that I'm competing with the others? Right. Well, on the simplest, simplest, and you might think most obvious level, I urge my clients, which are advertising mm -hmm. agency and marketers, yeah. to make sure that they are where people are looking for them. Right. So if I was looking for a CRM tool, right, mm -hmm. this is the great, you know, Google uh, opportunity sure. you just using Google as one example well you better be there when I'm looking for you and that that kind of sounds simple but it's again it has to be an objective everything is objective driven sure uh, I, I see I have done things uh, that I suggest anybody can do I use a service called cameo which mm -hmm. uh, in which uh, you can hire celebrities to do ads for you for f just a few bucks so on my website, and I put it up today uh, on my blog because I'll, I'm going to reference it and people can go look at uh, Donald Trump recommending Peter Levitan as the world's smartest podcaster and marketer. Now, I also say, you know, I know some people <laughs> might be turned on slash turned off by Donald Trump, but you can't ignore him, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I would say, you know, you have to be cautious, but any brand can use some of the tools that exist in the world to borrow interest and to have, in this case with Cameo, and believe me, I don't own shares in the company. Sure, sure, sure. To, to have their people uh, produce a piece of communication for you. And then you wind up with a video that you can share and hopefully people go, wow, that's cool. Yeah, and I think that's it. I, th I think the, um, th what you're pointing out there is, is really critical and the fact that there's all these tools out there and, and people that you can leverage probably more cost effectively than you've ever at any time before if you want to get creative. Yes, the tools, it's, it's almost, it, well, let's, let's say it's without question overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, it's just you, you, uh, you can back yourself into a corner and start whimpering uh, when you <laughs> just search on, you know, yeah. how, to, how to stand out on Instagram. And I suggest to people uh, just try things. It's inexpensive. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, move on to the next one. But move pretty quickly and figure out what works for you. Not, there isn't one solution for everybody. But I'm mm -hmm. I will say to marketers and to people in general, with zillions of pieces of information hitting you a day, with lots of competition, you have to move pretty quickly. And again, I mean, I hate to you know <laughs> repeat the same thing over and over and over again, although I did learn that helps repetition helps. <laughs> you have to ask yourself if you want to stand out. And we see that, you know, you walk down the street. I mean, while proximity is important for dry cleaners, you may walk two extra blocks or if you're a San Diego in, mm -hmm. is that how they say it? Uh, yeah. You guys don't walk, right? You just drive places. You might Absolutely. drive two more blocks. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so some people stand out versus others. And there's a lot of learning there. Just look at your neighborhood and see who's, who's hitting it and who isn't. Yeah, and I think that's, but I think you, you just said an important point there. It's like, do you, want to, do you want to stand out? And I think obviously, if you want to stand out, then it needs to be something that you're kind of all in for, right? I mean, you can't sort of stand out a little bit and not stand out the rest, you know, I mean, you have to get everybody aligned within your company if you're going to stand out. Yeah, and that's another point I make to people um, where you have multiple employees, and let's just use LinkedIn mm -hmm. as an example. Yeah. Everyone should be speaking, I don't know, have, I forget how you say this, from the same hymnal, same hymn, mm -hmm. the book. Yeah. Uh, you know, three sentences. This is what my company does. Uh, and, and have it be shared across the LinkedIn profiles. Because if somebody is looking at you and saying, I'm interested in your product or service, and now I'm kind of kind of going higher level here. Right. You want everybody to be, or, uh, to be on brand message. This is a, one of those simple ones. It's like when I said earlier, be where people are looking for you. If there's a list of mm -hmm. CRM companies, you're on it and you're yeah. at the top of the list. And um, just make sure everybody's saying the same thing because if there is, 
people do a lot of research before they give you a phone call these days. I, I think they still call. Well, some people call. <laughs> yeah, no, they do. They do. Um, but it's it, But to your point, though, um, about everybody being on the same page, it's one of the things I think where a lot of companies kind of fall down. And it's like, you know, they maybe they'll spend a lot of time with the marketing folks and they'll get the messaging right and all of that. But they won't. Um, they won't uh, spread that out to the whole organization and especially often to the salespeople and the salespeople are often your your touch point to the market you know they're the tip of the sphere and often sometimes they'll have a different message than the marketing people was because there's been no alignment well I'll, I'll put that in the column I'll call lunacy uh, and this doesn't <laughs> cost money mm -hmm. for you to have alignment in your company I mean to me this is a best practices uh, this, these are the kind of things that you wake up in the morning doing because the other stuff's much harder. So I, I, mm -hmm. I always recommend to my clients, let's, let's figure out the easy stuff and get that done first. And then we'll work on the hard stuff, which is, you know, how do I sound different on Facebook or whatever mm -hmm. platform that you want to use? Yeah, no, I would agree with you, but it's interesting the fact that uh, sales marketing alignment is still a subject. I mean, any, uh, in, in 2020, which you would think that we would have put that one to bed by now, but clearly not. Um, as it keeps cropping up as an issue. So, I mean, getting alignment is obviously the critical first, the critical first step. Then obviously the, the second part is whatever your message is to make sure it's reflected on all your assets, right? You know, whether it's the web, whether it's social media or whatever, that it's a, it's, it's a uniform message as well. Well, we, uh, you know, there are different terms that I call it amplification. So mm -hmm. if I write a pick a number, 2,000 word blog post. I, if I can cut that up and, and use it on a LinkedIn or on a Facebook or an Instagram, uh, I've written a couple of books. Each of those books, each of those chapters has been repurposed, another term, across all other media. Mm -hmm. And if I really had my act together, and I've, I don't, I've done a lot of videos in my life, but I'm, I'm not as good as you are, uh, I should be turning all of those into video too. So people can find you whether on YouTube or whatever platform, again, whatever they're looking for, plus their search engine marketing that drives these videos and people find them. Yeah, and I think that's, a, that's an important point for people is that they, they often struggle because they think I have to create lots and lots and lots of content assets. But just what you outlined there is, if you're clever, you can create one content asset and then leverage it multiple ways. Like, you know, we'll do this video interview. It'll also be an audio podcast and all the platforms. We may take a blog post out of it. There's, uh, so it's more about how you creatively use the content if you're clever enough rather than having to you know, create lots and lots of content. It's like you create and leverage it multiple ways because people receive um, information in different ways. Yes, and I'll, I'll use what I call the P word, which mm -hmm. is G-rated. So don't, don't worry, I'm not going to say anything <laughs> too difficult. Yeah. Although an Irishman in San Diego has probably heard everything I would imagine at this point. Um, uh, yes, the, P word is, some. <laughs> some. the P word is process. Mm -hmm. So write down your process, because even what you said, you know, I'm going to take this, this video podcast, turn it into an audio podcast. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut some pieces out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. People will get overwhelmed. So uh, my message is write down the process. First of all, you don't have to do everything. Just write the yeah. process down and use, uh, you know, I did this, I did, the, you know, go through the drill. And I can tell you, I, I am process driven. I grew up as an account executive in advertising. I fail at that. It isn't easy. Now it helped me when I, when I owned my own agency and I could turn around mm -hmm. to people and say, please sure. do this. Right. Uh, but I, I like being a one man show and I am, but man, it's hard. I mean, you know, all of a sudden, whoa, I got two hours into this. Mm -hmm. But it yeah, pays and off. I th yeah. And I think that's a, and I think that's another important point to underline the whole process thing, because sometimes people, when it comes to your marketing or sales and everything, they think, oh, process, you know, that sounds like it's, it's restrictive and I want to be really creative and all of that. But the reality is that process is your friend because if you lay out the process properly, then you can execute on what we said. If you don't have the good process to support these things, you can be as creative as you want to be, but you won't, you won't end up with the results. Well, I'm seeing a t-shirt for you. Process is your friend. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'll let you, you, yeah. can, you can run with that. I will. I will. I'll get my, I'll get my merchandising section, my merchandising department of zero working on that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what would you say, I mean, today, um, 
obviously, I mean, I think the key point, as you said earlier, is you need to be where your customers are, where people expect to find you. Um, do you think, I mean, when people look at there's so many different platforms, so many different places to be, um, if you want to, if you want to kind of break out of the me too, should you be looking at going to different platforms and maybe even kind of pioneering there? I'd say you have to start with the basics. I mean, think of it all like a pyramid. Uh, you mm -hmm. have to be and have a presence and leverage Google as best as you can. Right. So if you look at, I'm just using Google for example, and this is why this stuff's so complicated. If you look at a Google, if you do a search on Google now, I w I'm gonna make up these numbers. There used to be 10 or 12 lists. Uh, you'd be on a yeah. list of 10 or 12 companies. Exactly. Google has so consumed their own space that uh, it's, I, I'm gonna say it's it, it, at best half of the links on, the, on a Google search page are dedicated to free people. So um, you really have to think how to use Google. And if you're not showing up on the one, two, three pages, first three pages, forget it. I mean, even the first two pages, mm -hmm. then think about buying ads. Nail Google first. And this doesn't really go for everybody. I just wanna be cautious sure. here, but I would mm -hmm. say nail Google first. And then, you know, spend the time figuring out, is it Instagram or Facebook? You know, Facebook is a B2B platform. It's very interesting mm -hmm. uh, because I'm a, I'm a B2B guy. I'm getting served up ads by B2B companies. Yeah. So, you know, it, this is where, uh, you know, the golden goose here is being able to understand what, what of all of these, I mean, like a dozen platforms you should be using. And uh, I can tell you, even the best advertising agencies in the world have a problem sometimes solving that problem for their clients. Yeah, well, particularly as uh, as these platforms evolve very quickly. I mean, you take Facebook for for an example. I mean, Facebook has quickly evolved to a place where there's not a lot of young people on it. You know, it's, as you say, it's a B two B platform. Mm -hmm. It's generally um, it seems to be more like people of our generation now seem to be on Facebook. Um, you know, the kids all went to Instagram, but now they've all gone on to TikTok and there's, you know, Instagram is kind of, the, so it's the evolution of these platforms. So it's, it's kind of like you have to be careful and look at where is the platform now and what, what is the demographic of that platform today as opposed to what it was maybe even last year. Well, I, you know, I think you, if, if you want to reach younger people, I have a program, I, I'm hopefully going to start this year which is a broader scale mentoring for African-American teens. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm writing the plan out now. It's going to take me a while to figure this out. And I realize I, I don't know what black uh, kids pay attention to. Mm -hmm. I, you, know, I, I, right. you know, I can't suss that out. Mm -hmm. So I have to talk to their parents. I have to talk to these kids. You have to really understand your target market. It's not so obvious, but mm -hmm. everybody's target market does something. Now, if you're selling um, your suppositories, uh, Facebook is probably a fantastic platform, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm not sure other than humorous TikTok yeah. videos, uh, yeah. you know, the suppositories, it's the best place to sell suppositories. Yeah, and I mean, and um, you probably could do some great humorous TikTok videos, but I don't think the, the demographic you're reaching would be the correct one. Um, well, which, I'll uh, tell you, you know, it's changing. I mean, uh, Mr. Trump put TikTok on the map. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I would say a quarter of the people using TikTok today didn't know about it until the U.S. government decided there was something amiss there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. it's it's be careful what you wish for. Yeah, and the old what a deal that adage. What is it? There's um, what's that? Um, you know, there's uh, there's no bad publicity. I guess that comes into play well. there. <laughs> Uh, well, I just experienced something this week. I won't go into great detail, but there's sure. an advertising agency in Dallas where the founder who's in his 80s made a very big mistake in what he said. It was, a, let's call it a sort of racial comment. Mm -hmm. They've lost accounts like Motel 6, uh, the right. largest supermarket chain in Texas. Uh, I mean, I could go on. So at this stage of the game, man, you got to really pay attention to what yeah. you're saying. I mean, it's nuts. Yeah. But, no, no, it is. And I mean, I think that's an also it's a good uh, it, that's a good lesson, I think, too, because sometimes when people think about, oh, let's do something crazy or wacky, they're going to stand out and be different. You have to take a step back for a moment and say, OK, um, how is this going to play? Is this on a global scale? Because, I mean, if you're going to push it out there, but uh, because, I mean, I often say to people, um, you know, humor is very subjective, right? So 
you have to be you have to be very careful in the if you're going to use humor about how it's going to translate and obviously as you just said nowadays you probably got to get multiple people to look at it from many angles to make sure that there isn't an interpretation that you never thought of right well i said you know i go back to the beginning where i mentioned that i have mm -hmm. the Donald Trump impersonator mm -hmm. yeah. um, giving me an endorsement. Uh, I just, and I wrote this this morning uh, on, the, on my website. I said, you know, <laughs> I'm not sure if everybody's going to dig this. Right. But yeah. In terms of, uh, and, you know, I'm not making a political statement, and I'm sure. using probably the most famous man in the world at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my audience understands that I'm joking. Yes, I, I would imagine there are some uber liberals that would look at that and, uh, being horrified, you mm -hmm. know, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's what I'm thinking when, when, when whatever you're doing with your brand, you have to, you have to take all of these in, in things into account and decide if that's what you want to do. Are you comfortable with that or whatever? But, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a complicated, it's a complicated world out there, I think. And it's, and messaging has gotten more complicated than ever. Right. Well, I, you know, uh, I'm watching f American football right now on television. So I'm seeing commercials I hadn't seen in a while, right? Television. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And um, I'm seeing, and I, uh, I can't remember this. I should know the name of the brand. This is the essence of advertising. They use a lizard, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, uh, you know the insurance companies who you would think would be very, very quiet, all of a sudden have the craziest ads that you see. And, uh, you know, it rolls out once one company does crazy then the next and the mm -hmm. next, but uh, they're trying to get your attention. And I haven't really personally figured out where they're going with this, but uh, Geico, right? I mean, yeah, I understand Geico, Geico yeah. sounds like mm -hmm. a lizard. That one makes yeah. sense. Uh, but you'd think insurance companies would be very cautious and conservative, but they sure aren't on television. No, no, they're not. And um, but it's funny how how where that happens. I remember in, you probably remember this too. I mean, working in Satchi and Satchi, there was a famous English. Uh, I think it was an insurance company that had a they had an orange umbrella, and like it, it was instantly recognizable. But yeah. when they did, but when they did research into it, everybody recognized that the orange umbrella was an insurance company. But most people got the name of the insurance company. Right? <laughs> well, that is uh, that is a uh, sort of a problem. I use dating yeah. often as a metaphor for yeah. business development. It would be nice if the uh, person, man, woman, whatever you want to date, mm. actually knows your name. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so that's another one where you have to be careful. You can come up with something really clever, but if it actually, if your name doesn't get associated with it, uh, yeah. all you've done is just help everybody else. Well, Geico did a, you know, Geico for the obvious reasons did a good job in choosing a Geico yeah. to be their spokesperson. No, absolutely. Well, listen, uh, Peter, this has been fantastic. All of Peter's information is going to be in his contributor bio below this video. Uh, but before we go, Peter, if you just want to tell people in a couple of moments what it is you do today. Well, I'm morphing. I'm one of those guys, you know, I never, I can't quite sit still. Who knows if it's, mm -hmm. a, a, you know, some affliction. Um, I've been coaching since I sold my agency a few years ago. I, I coach advertising, PR, and design agencies. But I'm getting incoming now from small businesses. And every, I mean, I used to work with major corporations, so uh, it's morphing. I'd say right now I coach marketing companies, but I'm, I'm getting um, interesting. Uh, you know, people, people find you, and they decide yeah. for themselves if they want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's fantastic. Listen, thanks very much, Peter. Um, I think there's a lot of takeaways here. There's some really good takeaways here. I think uh, you should definitely review it and start looking at your own messaging and realize that this is a tough world to stand out in. So you got to get creative. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.